Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to learn one of the most important topic in the learning process of Excel formulas and functions that is references. Previously we have seen a video on references but that is for Excel cell references. But this tutorial is for references in Excel formulas and functions. Both are two different concepts. So let's try to understand why formula references are actually required. The concept of references in Excel will make your formulas more smart and flexible thereby saving your time and effort while working with data. In my previous videos, you might have seen me dragging an Excel formula to multiple cells and Excel used to automatically update that function to subsequent rows and columns. That's what I meant by smart and flexible. These references will basically allow you to recycle the Excel formulas across multiple cells without any need to manually update the cell references. We have two types of references in Excel formulas and functions. First is relative reference and second is fixed or absolute reference. In relative reference, as we have already seen, the cell references will automatically change based on the position of the formula when it is copied or moved to another cell. But in absolute reference, the cell references will never change even when the formula is copied or moved to another location. In relative reference, the Excel formulas will have normal cell references like A1 and B2, but in absolute reference, we use dollar as a special symbol and it can be used before column and row or either of them. I have listed few examples below. In relative reference, if you copy a formula like A1 plus B1 from row 1 to row 2, it will automatically update to A2 plus B2, and we have seen such examples already. But in absolute reference, the behavior of cell reference will change based upon the position of the dollar symbol. Say for example, we have a dollar symbol in front of column and as well as row. This will fix both column and row and both references will never change. In the second example, we have dollar symbol in front of row but not in front of column. So this will fix row but it will allow column to change its reference. Now in the third example, we have the dollar symbol in front of column but not in front of row. This will fix column but it will allow row to change its reference. I know it is a bit confusing for any new Excel learner but let me try to illustrate in a better way. Say we have an Excel file and we enter a formula as equal to A1 in B2 cell. Obviously, it will point at cell A1. Now, if we copy this formula to cell D4, the formula will get updated as C4. Let's understand the reason behind. First, we are copying the formula on column D, which is two columns towards right. So even the cell reference in the formula will get shifted by two columns towards right. And that will stand at column C. Second, we are copying this formula on row number 4, which is three rows downwards. So even the cell reference in the formula gets shifted by three rows down and stands at row number 4. So the new cell reference in the formula will be C4. Since both column and row references are shifting in this example, we call it as relative column and relative row reference. Now let's enter a formula as equal to A dollar symbol 1 in B2 cell. Obviously, it will point at cell A1. But observe, we have added dollar symbol to the row reference. Now, if we copy this formula to cell D4, the formula will get updated as C$1. Let's understand the reason behind. First, we are copying the formula on column D, which is two columns towards right. And since we have not added any dollar symbol to the column reference, the cell reference in the formula will get shifted by two columns towards right. And that will stand at column C. Secondly, we are copying this formula on row number 4, which is three rows downwards. But since we have added dollar symbol to row reference, the cell reference in formula will stand at row number 1 itself. So the new cell reference in the formula will be C$1. Since only column reference is changed and row reference remains same in this example, we call it as relative column and fixed row reference. Now in the third scenario, let's enter the formula as equal to $A1 in B2 cell. Obviously, it will point at cell A1, but observe, we have added dollar symbol in front of column reference. Now, if we copy this formula to cell D4, 
the formula will get updated as dollar a4 let's understand the reason behind first we are copying this formula to column d which is two column towards right but since we have added the dollar symbol to column reference the cell reference in the formula will stand at column a secondly we are copying this formula on row number 4 which is three rows downwards but since we have not added any dollar symbol to row reference the cell reference in the formula gets shifted by three rows down and stands at row number 4 so the new cell reference in the formula will be dollar a4 since only column reference is fixed and row number is allowed to change we call it as fixed column relative row reference now in the last scenario let's enter a formula as dollar a dollar 1 in b2 cell obviously it will point at cell a1 but observe we have added dollar symbol to column and row references now if we copy this formula to cell d4 the formula will remain as dollar a and dollar 1 let's try to understand the reason behind first we are copying this formula on column d which is two column towards right but since we have added dollar symbol to the column reference the cell reference in the formula will stand at column a itself secondly we are copying this formula on row number 4 which is three rows downwards but since we have added dollar symbol to row reference as well the cell reference in the formula will remain at row number 1 itself now the new cell reference in the formula will be dollar a and dollar 1 since both column and row references are fixed we call it as fixed column and fixed row reference i hope this concept is clear feel free to watch this video couple of times and understand it clearly before jumping into new videos so let's go back to excel and then try to understand each of these scenarios with an example so we are back into excel this is the sample data we will be working on this data has list of five different items their respective unit price and their quantity of sales across five different months from january to may at first we will try to calculate total amount for the same five months which is basically unit price multiplied by quantity and then we will take this total amount as input and then calculate discount amount for same five months in both simple examples we will definitely get better understanding of references in excel formulas so let's start by calculating the total amount let's first select the cell below the january month and then add the formula to multiply unit price of item a with its quantity in january month the total will be 50 now if we drag this formula to all the months we must get the values as 90 60 50 and 50 but we get whole different values let me double click on the formula below february month and we see it is multiplying c6 and d6 values but in real it must multiply b6 with d6 value you can also match the color codes as well so to make sure all the formulas are pointing at b6 value we must tell excel not to shift the column references when we drag this formula across different columns and we do it by adding the dollar symbol in front of the column reference of unit price value let's go back to january month formula and add a dollar symbol to column b Now if we drag this formula to different columns we get the desired values row wise we don't have any restrictions so let's drag all the values in one shot and we are done now let's calculate the discount value for each total amount under january let's multiply its total amount of item a by b2 cell which is basically the percentage value but this cell has integer 5 so to convert it to percentage value we need to divide it by 100 and let's enclose this division operation in a parenthesis hit enter and we will get the value as 2.5 now if we drag this formula to all the months we end up in same issue and we get values as 0 let us double click on the formula below february month and we see the percentage value is pointing at c2 cell instead of b2 so to make sure all these formulas are pointing at b2 cell we must tell excel to not to shift the column as well as row references when we drag this formula across different columns and rows let's go back to january month calculation and then add a dollar symbol in front of column reference and as well as row reference and then drag this formula to all other columns and rows 
now we get all the values correctly and all these formulas will point at b2 cell so by now you could have understood the concept of cell references in excel formulas that's all i wanted to cover in this video